All right, welcome everybody to the Monday, October 21st Conway Select Board meeting. Call the meeting to order. Um, if everybody is okay with it, I'm going to skip to new business uh, since Ron um, Ron is here with uh, Raymond. Yes. Great. Um, so are you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Uh, first item on the agenda for new business is discussion and vote on hiring Raymond Miscavige as a new CDL driver for the highway department. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you already know the town, obviously. Yes. Yes. Everybody knows you. Yes. Um, I don't, but it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I, I have no questions or anything. Uh, Ron, did you want to say anything? Well, I think we're fortunate to find somebody with his knowledge, and I'm very, very happy with it. And hopefully things go good moving forward here. But and there's only one license you don't currently carry, correct? Uh, that's the 4G, yeah, but I, I could, uh, I could, I will get it. Okay. Uh, I'm not up with it for it tonight. Right. And Ron, that's just a special over the fence mower, right? Yeah. So it's... Oh, got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, it's not something that is it's not needed anytime soon. That's okay. Sure. Yeah. So. Get some sheep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Mm -hmm. Erica. Erica, nice to meet you. Um, and you know, Chris. yes, nice. and Chris. Nice to meet you. Yes. And you have like a mechanic background as well, right? A little bit. Yeah. I, I wouldn't consider myself a mechanic, though. Mm -hmm. But better than basic most. knowledge. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. And, uh, and tree work too. Yes, my yeah. tree work. Awesome. awesome. So. Very awesome. Okay. Any questions? When can you start? Yeah. <laughs> I'll work right now if you need me to. Oh, okay. Awesome. Well, I'll make a motion to hire Raymond uh, Ms. Cabbage as a new commercial driver's license driver for I'll the highway department. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome, Raymond. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else, Ron? No. Anything else you want to say? The, his pre-employment physical isn't until uh, November 4th. So. Oh, okay. And Jan's got the paperwork ready for you, right? I got some. Okay. okay. All right. Great. We can't make some bribes to move that up? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wish. <laughs> so we have to Cookies wait for or something? to start, so it'll be yeah. a month away. A month no, and a half. it's two weeks. Two weeks. November 4th. Yeah. November. November. Yeah. November. Got it. Yeah. Not December. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. By then, all the paperwork and everything will be done. So that's true. All that on. takes time, anyway. Yeah. We waited this long. All right. <laughs> Winter's coming. Yeah. 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 <laughs> really? Doesn't kill me. Oh, you're saying it's not? <laughs> no, not too weird. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you much. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's great. Right. Long and sweet. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. All right, moving to the top of the agenda minutes. Uh, vote to approve the minutes for, of September 23rd September, and September 30th and October 7th. That's all I can say. I move me to second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda are the warrants, which I looked through earlier. Um, nothing unusual as, 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 been, as it has been lately. So I'll make a motion to approve the accounts payable warrant in the amount of $152,040.29, payroll warrant in the amount of $144,511.63, and the payroll deduction warrant the amount of $35,735.50. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Meetings attended by select board members. There it goes. Um, I prefer con meeting on Thursday. I think by the most, um, I can afford everyone the, 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 the whatever was just distributed at that meeting. Um, I think probably the most relevant thing to us is that there's, they're looking to um, update after X number of years, the FERCOG charter, which um, will require a majority vote of the FERCOG executive committee 
two thirds weighted votes of the Burkhoff Council, and then if it passes there, two thirds majority vote by two thirds of all member towns. So that's something we should just be prepared for for next annual town meeting. Um, and it's it's really just kind of to update the um, just make changes to some language that's obsolete now. There's certain functions, and, and basically they haven't reviewed the charter since it was initially chartered. I think so. Interesting. Okay, uh, Elaine. Uh, I had school committee last week. Uh, the most uh, relevant thing to us is that they um, we went over capital planning for the school grammar school um, and we probably the next big one will be the boilers mm -hmm. um, but we're also in discussion about having a, using some money to do an overall school-wide assessment to see if there might be a more energy saving way to go because the boilers are holding in there right now mm -hmm. especially with the work we did already so we have time to really see what's the best choice to move forward. Okay. So almost every class, I think every classroom now does have a mini split. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so we're in discussion about making that happen. So, really, are there such things as like ground source heat pumps? I think there's like geothermal for schools, like, but well, there's yeah, we think yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Just to piggyback on that, um, Darius had reached out to us about having the sustainability committee work correct on school uh, energy issues. Mm -hmm. so, because Deerfield yeah. got a grant yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, so uh, like a green energy grant or something. Yeah. So you would think there'd be plenty of those out there. I don't think there'd be plenty of those out there. I did ask I forwarded the capital list yeah. that we have. Um, mm -hmm. so in general we're we're um, doing, you know, we because we put money aside. We're, you know, we are. We actually have the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever it is that we think the two boilers would cost. Mm -hmm. But since they're still going, why not be smart and really look at what the options are and look at a grant to look at what the options mm -hmm. are. So, is our sustainability committee is. Up and running, right? Absolutely. And actually, they had just met last week, and I had forwarded them the email from Darius requesting that they become engaged in this. And um, from what I understand, they're on board. They're willing to, they're already work, working with Chris Mason, who was our local rep for Green Communities. And, oh, cool. Yeah, so they're they're on board, and FERCOG is still helping us, and as far as I know, will continue to help us update our data that keeps us um uh, in compliance okay. with the Green Communities Program. So, yeah, they're definitely, they're definitely. I mean, just that. an example is like there's all the mini splits and stuff in school now, but they're not on like a system. Right. That you can right. like, you know, right. control them all from one thing. You know, it's like very manualized at this point, which ideally you wouldn't have that. Right. You have some. I forget the term. But it's There's called. a BMS system. Yes. Yes. I see that on here. What's that stand for? Oh, Lord. Something. Man is it, is it, it's not boiler management system, is it? Building. No. Maybe. Building. Oh, building. Building. Yeah. Building. Building. building management yeah. system. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And so basically, it's getting everything on, as Elaine was saying, you know, an electronic control so that one person can control all your Got HVAC it. and other systems. Right. Yeah, because yeah. that's the second largest item on here. And even remotely. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So say we had, because it's our emergency shelter, if we suddenly said, oh my God, like we're going to need this like later today, somebody could get on the system, mm -hmm. put the heat on and wherever we needed it to get it like cranking up or opening up the shelter or something. Got it. So I think it would be a smart investment. Yeah, there's got to be grants out there. I for, totally agree. I mean, we can poke at what Deerfield got, right. for sure. The, there are grants out there, and on top of that, um, you'll see it later in my TA update, but there's a new legislation that was just signed, and actually now municipalities can actually get credits for work like this that they do, um, solar and, H and EV and that kind of thing. 
So, you know, we, we've never filed tax returns because we're a municipality, but we can now file for tax credits mm -hmm. and get rebates on this kind of work that we do going mm -hmm. forward. So it's literally like brand new. So I'm, cool. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great. So that was my only meeting. Um, I had a capital improvements meeting. Yes. Um, and then some, not real meetings, but uh, just discussions with Veronique and town council. Um, moving on, public comments. Everybody on? Moving on to unfinished business. Discuss, discussion and vote on the senior and veteran tax workoff program parameters. Veronique sent um, some examples for the eligibility. Um, so I guess we can just kind of start from the top, right? The age limit should be um, 60, 65, I, 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 62. See, I'm like, I'm thinking we're gonna have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I, I would personally recommend 65. Um, we do have a much older community. Um, there's plenty of people that are still working um, in their early 60s right now. So I guess I was thinking of somebody who might be compromised right. at an earlier age that might be able to do some tasks and produce some extra income, but, you know, retired early or, you know, but, you know, I'm just a thought. Mm -hmm. so. But true, if just your average person retiring, I would right. think 65 would be normal. I think the more important uh, eligibility mark that we hit is for income level, but yeah, um, why don't we come back to the age then and talk yeah. about income level? Yeah, I mean, I wonder if we could put 65. I mean, I think we could start with 65 and see what kind of, yeah. you know. And then if people, if we get any. Okay. And maybe if we only have whatever. like five people apply, then we'll yeah. that we can lower it. next year lower yeah. it. Right. Yeah, I think it's a good starting point. Okay. Erica says 65, it's 65. That's right. <laughs> Do we have to vote on each one? I, I would prefer that at the end you yeah. just vote, okay. confirm yeah. by vote that this is your parameters, yes. Okay. So I think that, yeah. Age limit, 65. Okay, so income, income limit. Um, let's see, so uh, Amherst used 52, oh geez, Amherst is, uh, much more um, affluent neighborhood right. <laughs> than yeah. us, so we'll just skip that one. Um, Northampton bases there is on the mass state medium. Irving bases there on low income uh, cat of HUD uh, to Franklin County. Dalton in 2021 used 25,000 single, 33,000 married. That was again probably talking about that. Was three years ago, though. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, when Winchiden mm -hmm. uh, used 40,150 single and 45,900 married. Um, asset limit exclusive of primary residence and one vehicle. Oh, I see. Okay, that would be the next thing. So, what is the uh, what are the HUD? Oh, here yeah. we go. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so very low 50% um, would be one person 38350. And I was going to say this is just where we should go. It's going yeah, to be. I think so too. Then it's not. Do Random. we go to very low, extremely low, or I, I think low is out of the question. Mm -hmm. It should be between extremely to very. Um, extremely is extremely. Yeah, is it, I I'd go true. very low. Yeah, same. What do you think? Well, I mean, the census department has different numbers than HUD. Yeah. That's strange. Um, it yeah. says uh, individual, the median income is thirty around 37000 Is that national or is that for Franklin? It's just for Franklin County. Oh. This one was specifically for Conway. Oh, Jasper, okay. Yeah. Got it. No, oh, okay. But it doesn't tell us how many people are within this no. range. No. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I'd do it very well. I, th I think that sounds reasonable. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll stick with the very low parameter. Set by Franklin County MA HUD. So that would be single 38,350. Family. Here's what's confusing persons and family. One, that's, two, yeah, three. Yeah, it's like the household size. Again. I guess we right. can ask people that. Um, I mean, I would say three, right? I mean, that's a family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the ones, and this was, this was what one of the things that was difficult about going through all this was because. Everybody was kind of all over the map in what yeah. they were choosing. So, and a lot of just said single and, and married. And I'm assuming that they didn't put it in their documents, but if they based it on yeah. there's two yeah. some system, that then you could just go to the church. So, if right. we have a household of five people, yeah. we can just go to the five person. And you know, as long as we know we're using the very low yeah, that's good limits. Okay, that's totally fine. Uh, and then the exclusions uh, for the asset limit uh, the uh, primary residence in one vehicle, uh, 40,000 single or 55,000 mar uh, married is recommended. And to be honest, that was just because that was one of the only ones that I saw that had an asset limit, although they did talk about it in some of the others. But this is the only one that I saw that where they spelled out what it was. And it kind of makes sense that. You can be asset rich and still income yeah. poor, so it's up to the true about living in this town. If you don't, if everybody has a car, like. The but this is excluding your house and one vehicle. Oh, okay. That's assets above that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have two cars, you wouldn't qualify. Or more, no, that your would assets. Be one of your assets. Your assets. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm good with sticking with that. Uh, recommendation. I do. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention about um, the next process you're going to look at is how they're going to be chosen is that in all honesty I think there will have to be some consideration to uh, there's only a certain number of jobs that are available. Mm -hmm we're going to have to somehow match up the applicants with those jobs. So what I wanted to propose was that when we get the applications back, all the ones who qualify according to the structure, we also then look at matching because yeah. there'll be a form for them to fill out what skills right. they have. Yeah. So then it would be a lottery of those that match the positions and meet the income yeah, I agree. requirements. That makes sense. No, it's not a lottery. Well, because no, you're, it would be. Well, the lottery means that you're just pulling from a hat, right? We would be choosing people that could be a, put in that the could hat. Put, that could do the services that are She's available. saying if we have too yeah. many, right? Who are right. Qualified to oh, do got services. it. So we're put. Oh, oh. <laughs> now we have that kid. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean that's. I I think so because suppose like every single person who applies, the only thing they're able to do is stuff transportation bag stickers and we don't need five people to do that you know right so right yeah. so my guess is that you know hopefully we found enough different kinds of jobs that we'll be able to broaden it as much as possible mm -hmm. but it wouldn't make sense if somebody couldn't do any of the jobs that we have listed yeah right in the pool right, right. So, totally All right. but that's not the parameters we're going to vote on today right it's just, you know, these, just the, the income yeah. and well, the age right that that would be part of it because I would need the director from the board to be able to say to when we go through the applications that if they don't match one of these jobs, they don't go into the pool for the selection. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think that makes sense. If, the, if, if you can't do any yeah. of these things. Yeah, and the, like I said, there is a fair amount of different things there to be able to do. Right. A lot of it's clerical, obviously, but. Um, okay. Do you want to garden? Anybody want to garden? <laughs> that's in there. Weeding, Weeding is yeah. one of oh, them. Oh, okay. yeah, that's great. <laughs> so what else would you need? Would you need the timeline that's being shown as well? or? No, the timeline is just, I, you know, that was, you know, just to give you an idea of what we're hoping to yeah. do. Obviously, this year is behind the eight ball, but next year, I want to have the planning meeting in July and have all this done. <laughs> but this is, the, this is the hardest year to get the parameters set. So we would just have a vote. 
Okay. Probably in July mm -hmm. or August, where you reaffirm Re yeah. your parameters Great. for the next year. Okay. Sounds good. So, how would I make a motion? Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion for the Senior Veterans Tax, tax Workoff Program parameters to be set as follows. The age limit to be 65. The income to be that of the Franklin County MA HUD Metro area recommendation for very low income limits. Single is 38350 And then the family's based on the um, number of members. I second. Uh, uh, one more, sorry. <laughs> uh, the um, recommended in, uh, exclusions would be the asset limit um, exclusion of a primary residence and one vehicle. So those would be excluded. So the asset limit with those exclusions would be 40000 for single or 55000 for married. And then the method of choosing. And then the method would be through a lottery system. And we would also of qualified, in, applicants. Of qualified applicants for the jobs posted. Yeah. Great. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Now that we have um, Janet here, let's move on to uh, new business at the bottom. Discussion with Janet Chase and possible vote on Big Road Meadow mowing and management plans and invasives management on town properties. Not not weed. <laughs> so much not weed. Not weed. Yeah. <laughs> well, There's, welcome. Thank you all thank for joining. You. And uh, we make sure the minutes are aware that this is not for the open space committee. You know, I'm speaking for the open space. Uh, okay. We're we're a little rough on minutes tonight. Yes, I yeah I can see. So, but whatever. You know, it's just not me individually. It's on behalf of the committee. Okay. Awesome. And I'll reintroduce you to Julia. Hi, Julia. Uh, Hi, Julia. Who is our latest member of the committee and Great. helped enormously? Did anybody see the open space display at the Festival of the Hills? You can be honest, we can share <laughs> some information. No, I did not, but they I missed... walk by the, the Bigelow field all the time. Oh, good. Yeah, I love the sign. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice we have sign. a sign. We have a sign. Well, at the festival, we had a big display board showing all the different activities that we've done, which are myriad, mm -hmm. um, you know, walks and talks and, and some meadow renovation. Uh, and we have, maybe Elaine doesn't know, maybe from your past, uh, a huge agenda in the open space and recreation plan, which mm -hmm. lasts for seven years and it's big. Okay, so um, this big little meadow town owned uh, uh, has been on the radar and the agenda for improvement for many years because it's, it's just been mowed. Mm -hmm. And with today's climate and with the invasives, just mowing a meadow is not, depending on the meadow, uh, what's happened over there is that the knotweed has become matted and more. and. So to renovate it is, is a big project. It takes time. I mean, there are different methods for dealing with it and so on and so forth. Luckily, we have Owen Or Ormser, mm -hmm. who uh, volunteered his expertise, and we are following his guidance now, which is, uh, and, and we're also going slow and steady. In the past, we had a, uh, a pollinator plan that FERC had helped us did, and a lot of people participated, and, you know, one thing to to create a pollinator meadow for some town on property. I mean, we have, we have the South River Meadow, but there's more. And this is, this was the main one, but, um, so we've had, it's been I, ID'd and, and preliminary plans, but we're going really slow because the neighbors don't want anything changed. And, uh, and we're also taking a slow approach in terms of tackling the invasives with more careful mowing and uh, probably you know that we had Nick Potter mow it last year. He's got different mowing equipment and uh, rather than just the brush hog that Ron used and they can go around more carefully and they just worked with him to identify like the good plants from the bad plants. Anyway, that cost us $1,900. Um, and what we've been relying, all right, well, first we'll just go back to 
I think at late in the afternoon, I sent, I sent an email, one of the, and we've been in touch with the neighbors throughout this and invited them. We've had walks and come look and, and so forth. And, and most of them are pretty supportive, except don't get near my backyard and I don't want anybody looking in my backyard for, you know, the houses that are right at the bottom. We understand that. Um, but uh, one neighbor in particular that insists on fall mowing, complete fall mowing. And, um, oh, and in the committee feel that this is a better approach is the sp spring mowing long-term because you're not killing as many pollinators and you're letting things winter over. And over time, it will look better. So isn't sometimes spring and fall indicated? Uh, yes, I mean, it depends on what you've got there yeah. and, and what's, you know, the bad stuff you want to get before they go to seed. Yeah. There was a lot of, a bunch of hand pulling and some very selective mowing of some of the bittersweet this year so that there are less seeds, but the amount, I mean, everywhere, mm -hmm. the amount of bittersweet seeds just, uh, luckily that place doesn't have any knotwood <laughs> yet, it doesn't. Um, so it just to, you know, ask for your support for this approach, at least, you know, for this year, for this season, you know, it doesn't have to be mowed every fall. And there was some selective mowing and there was a complete mowing of late last, late last, last year. So, so there's currently no plan to mow this fall. Is that my understanding? Right. And if, if you did have Nick Potter do some select mowing, that that would be I mean, rather expensive. Uh, yes, I mean, what, what what Owen says in the email that you got sent uh, late today is for a spring mower. Uh, I'm sure you've thought of this, but any chance of would uh, having grazed be helpful? Oh, I, was good. I was waiting for goats. <laughs> goats, sheep. Sheep, actually, really. Uh, you know, if you want to manage it or pay for it, you know, we're all ears. I just uh, is that a good is that a suggested? I, well, it, it, it hasn't come up from oh, it from okay. Owen this time around. Okay. Um, my understanding is that it just takes. You know, they're going to be loose on the street. Hey, your goats here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that you you pay these people to come and. Right. The, I don't know if there are any in the area anymore. There used to be yeah. some in the area. I've been trying to get my hands on some. I know. Goats if you do. Time, yeah. It's, Oh, sheep are better. Well, sheep are. In the, yeah. I mean, we could offer to say it to our sheep, farmer. Sheep are not as bright. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, so, what's the farmer. concern with the neighbors, like critters, voles, whatever, being around? I, th I, I think in it's it's an aesthetic. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I mean, we've explained this before, you know, and invited them and look at the literature and so on and so forth. But it's just kind of we want things done the way they've always been done. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. And, it, and it's, it's just one in particular, so we might. Just to, just to be clear, this land is actually technically owned by the Conservation Commission. It was willed it's down. Owned, and it's, it's to the town. Well, it's, it's to the town. It's for the, the conservation. Man, yes. And, but and, what I was going to say is that we're really fortunate that Open Space is willing to come in and do this management. Right. Because otherwise, it would just be sitting there with the concert. You know, yes. what else would be happening? No, I think so it's, we're, it's really we're really lucky that they're yeah, which is yeah, willing to manage this. It's been for yeah. how many years? It just can't be developed. So it says one thing all the butters agreed on is that we would like to see the field mowed yearly in the fall. It sounds like the butters agreed on that, but the the town, neither the town nor the open space committee, ever made a commitment that we were going to right, do that. Right, right, and and there was. I mean, there was no meeting where all the butters, you know, said this and voted and <coughs> signed. I mean, there was no petition. It's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and particularly from the letter writer. Yeah. Um, Ecologically speaking, as Owen recommends, it's better just to do it in the spring. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, somewhat entwined with this is. is situation of funding for this. Um, in 2016, after the most of the, oh, some of the work on the South River Meadow was done and various folks who cared about it were trying to tackle the knotweed and now what do we do? It sort of 
was a low in terms of the development options there. And Tom Hutchinson came to us in the open space committee um, saying that he wanted, wanted us to do the same thing for the Bigelow Meadow and, and take that on with suggestions, recommendations, and pursue uh, getting the edges of the South River Meadow cleaned up. And he said he had a special pot of money. Oh, okay. Uh, and it was the Small Cities Grant for creating and implementing the open space plan. Okay, well, you. And at the time it was 51 thousand dollars that the town got in the 1990s. Some spending had done before, been done, done before, um, but uh, uh, really th that meant that we could pay for the Lori Sanders natural history assessment that gave a plan for what we should do. It's still up on our website and it's a beautiful plan. Marks out all the zones and, and basically it's what we've been following. We took that, we had like a public hearing open meeting with the planning board and there had been a park commission before and so on and so forth. Anyway, we got this plan and then we started implementing. Um, and this money was also used for uh, a matching fund for invasive management with the South River State Forest to the, the, the two state forests in the town it was an incentive. So those were approved by by the board of selectmen, you know, and uh, and then executed. Well, this not too long ago, Monique decides, what's this money? Where's this coming from? And she and uh, uh, the current town accountant uh, can't find any record that this is appropriate. So this is appropriate use because there aren't any records. Right, Ernie, it, it wasn't that I decided you had come and asked to pay some bills with this, and Mike questioned it. Okay, it was so okay. because we have no records of yes. what this money is to be used for. Yes. So Mike is doing some research now because we're really not sure how the town got this money to begin with. And Jan's right; it was about fifty-one thousand dollars back then. We have no record of. Tom's information or a vote changing this because normally small cities are CDBG funds. Mm -hmm. So Mike, once he gets done with his year end, will be researching that for open space to see if this is an allowable expense. Mm -hmm. Is there still that fifty one thousand dollars? There's about forty two thousand. Forty two, forty three thousand. Um but we had sort of undertaken some more projects. Um like this spending money on the meadow and we have a lot of other similarly related and including the spending or leveraging some of it for other invasive cleanup around um i mean there's basically no end of invasive good good, good use mm -hmm. good good use you know i mean we do the, we, remember, we do the invasives to make way for the natives mm -hmm. um and education. So, uh, I mean, I'm hoping we'll get some clarity. Is soon, the, do, you got, do you guys or, have any other money to access? No, I mean, we have like 3,100 in our, our operating okay. budget. We have a, a couple of um, uh, community preservation earmarked funds. Okay. One's for signs and, and one for the invasives at the South River Meadow, which we've been using for many years and it's going to be gone soon. So okay. we don't have any other, um, you know, fun. Yeah. So we'll think we'll figure this out by the end of the year? I, I honestly don't know, but um, you know, unfortunately it takes, because it's one of the special revenue funds, it would take a to go to town meeting. It could be, what could happen, especially because we like to clean out our special revenue funds and make sure we know what they're supposed to be used for. So if, you know, in Mike's research, he can't find it. And if we come to the conclusion, well, there's money that we need to allocate, we can certainly take it to town meeting and say, could you please reallocate this to the open space plan so that, you know, yeah. I mean, that's, but unfortunately it would, it would have to be done at town meeting. Yeah. To, okay. to clear that. Any, any 
potential for a, a, a special town meeting? We don't have one of the books at the moment. You never know. They come, that's why they come up is because something comes up and yeah. then all of a sudden you have to have one. Yeah. So I can definitely put that down on, on my list, but I have to wait for Mike to do his research. Right, right. First. Well, I just hope it doesn't get returned. Well, I have a couple of things to add. I'm not trying to extend. You know, all, I like to be very efficient in these meetings. But one, if we have funds that haven't been used, since the 90s. Imagine if that was put in a high yield savings account, how much we would have right now. Mm -hmm. So now I'm wondering how many other funds are out there sitting with the town. Well, that well are, why wouldn't they have been invested also? That's they, what I'm wondering. They, they would have yeah. been. They, they would have been. So oh, okay. They would have yeah. been. I'm yeah. just making sure yeah. this, like, that yeah. would be wasted been, money yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. But, like the community okay. preservation fund, that's earned a lot of interest yeah. over right. the years, yeah. based on the balance. Okay. Yeah. No, um, Jan, Jan is very much on top of it. Okay, good. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would have been such yeah, a waste. Yeah. Um, the other thing was, you know, we're talking about invasives. That, you know, it, it'd be great to have funding to help town property. There's also residents that are having extreme issues. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there could be reading material, just even online, not printed out, but online to yeah. show. Reading material. You know, reading material yeah. to show, hey. This is American bittersweet. You don't want to touch American yeah. bittersweet. Here's what you should do with knotweed, especially if it's near a water source, because mm -hmm. uh, people don't know. So right. I'm, I'm wondering if like, if we took just the invasives that we know are a real problem here mm -hmm. in Conway, which are those, those are the two. Right. I, I, it's autumn olive, bittersweet, knotweed, uh, what's the garlic one? Multi-chloro. Garlic yeah, mustard, yeah. Garlic garlic mustard. mustard yeah. right. A tree of heaven was even found this really? summer on my property. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm really here in a, a, what is it called? Mm -hmm. Million a mile. Oh, mile, mile, mile a minute. Mile a minute. Mile a minute. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that was either. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's really an excellent idea. We were, uh, after the festival, we thought we should really brainstorm. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, do some brainstorming about how we can get this word out more and get people. Yeah. Uh, more involved. Yeah, and there, there. I know there's already links out there. Even with um, Smith College has some good ones. Oh, there's lots of there's, there's a ton of online information. Yeah, yeah. It, it would just be nice to have something on our website to say here oh, residents for yeah. invasive species. Here's, here's what you can do. Here's mm -hmm. what you can do. Yeah. Dr. Janet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my strategy. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to have a bittersweet pulling competition. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Next year, Festival of the Hills. Well, we're going to teach the kids. I mean, this yeah. is ongoing. It's got to be taught at the I grammar mean, school, Mr. I mean, Chairman. It, yeah. Especially with the knotweed with the floods. The knotweed oh, is terrible. double. It's terrible. It's, it's awesome. terrible. Since the floods, yeah. And when it, was, when it was blooming, you could really see it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's wild how much yeah. there is. Yeah. And, and remember all the critters that need that space. Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. move there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, if we go to spring, if there's going to be like a spring mowing that um, that we would have Roaring Brook do, a special yeah. spring mowing, we would have to assess whether we could pay for that this year. And it gets a little tricky at the end of the year because we pay for Andrew to mow that meadow also. So it'll be a balancing act, but we'll carefully pay attention. Okay. Good. Um, so I guess, is there any need for you to maybe reaffirm that that you want to stick with this plan for for? I mean, Owen literally wrote books about this, right? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it sounds, sounds like a good it. plan. Right. <laughs> he sounds like a subject matter expert to me. So I I'm of the mind to go after what he is. Uh, recommending. And I would second that. I, I just, I wonder, if, is it something that we actually have to vote on? Or is this like It's the not purview, bad just um, to, it, you don't have to. Yeah. But it's not bad to have a record of it. So coming back in five years, you can well, say, well, this yeah. right. board yeah, did yeah. vote, this uh -huh. is your. I mean, what Lynn says, to follow the female, experts you manage don't do it, you know, she's yeah. going to come, you know. Right. right. So preemptively, we'll say the town is Follow ready. the experts Design management. Yeah. I you think. know, at least for this season or so, you know, until I run out of money and then. Um so I'll um make a motion to vote to um for the big low meadow uh maintenance for mowing to be done during the spring. 
just according to the according to the patient yes. 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 according yes. to the subject matter expert recommendation. Yes. Yes. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks Terrific. for all the work on this. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Super important. Thanks for your support. Yeah. yeah. And we'll, we'll, and, and, and we'll maybe we'll include you if we get to uh, when we do our uh, invasive uh, um, barns brainstorming. Yeah, great. Yeah, I, th I do think it'd be great to have a source yeah. available to the town. Well, yeah, one of the issues that we oh, I'm sort of always aware of is how to draw other people in and how to get the average person to to care, pay attention. Plant not weed in their yard. <laughs> I actually don't think it's a bad idea to have the grammar school have a competition in it. But, you know, I mean, is there any, you know, I just, I think that I can fly yeah. well, that by Yeah, well, a little Kristen. tiny knotweed, I mean, a little tiny bittersweet mm -hmm. can be pulled, and it's it's quite satisfying when it's real small, <laughs> right. and you can recognize the roots. And so for some ages, if you have anybody doing nature education, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't take long to ID it. Yeah. I think parent, somebody has to teach them what poison ivy looks like, right? Oh, so God. Just yes. should go along with it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and you can find some, and it's so warm now with, you know, it's, yeah. so, it's so, do it, but. Awesome. But Julia's had a lot of experience. Yeah, so my background is national park management, but my training and many years of experience was environmental education, outdoor education. So we can put together a little unit and, you know, yeah, yeah a couple of worksheets, let, let fun, cool. like fun sheets to like bingo, mm -hmm. invasive well, species bingo so or something. So could you have a contest at the Bigelow Man Meadow and have them come right. up and actually do So the sixth grade <laughs> is, is, is taught by like, uh, two Conway natives, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jamie Recor and Emily Holy. Mm -hmm. So well, Emily's the classroom we'll assistant, oh. and Jamie's the teacher. Is that the year teacher. they do outdoor ed? I'm not sure yeah. when they do outdoor ed. Well, I mean, it's but really they're they're the sixth graders, you know, yeah. about they'd be great age. They would be a great age to do some and education. And also for education to share with their parents. Right, and, so. and and Emily's from a farm family, yeah. so you know, would probably get behind this. I think it's so. a great idea. Yeah. All right, I will bring that to them. Okay. Well, thank you two for coming in. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thank you for being on the committee. Oh, Great. my pleasure. Oh. Yeah. Having fun and learning from Janet. Yeah. We have a yeah. 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 business. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have yes. the same amount. Yes. <laughs> yes. Same amount. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so okay. we're back. Okay. Still in new business. Um, Next on the agenda is discussion and vote to sign the contract with the streetlight study with RTE Energy Solutions. This would only require um, a signature from me. Thanks, Janet. Just so you all are aware, um, in the contract, it didn't, wasn't really stipulating what we wanted the scope of work to really, um, uh, the scope of work outline. Uh, he did. I just want to read what he did right back after we voiced our concerns on this. We will certainly include as an important objective identifying lights that can be safely decommissioned. Okay. Because uh, that was part that was of the study. Right? Large. Um, the, the numbers that they were giving back to us were about replacing lights on every single street light. Oh. So Veronique and I came back and said, no, that's not what we're looking for. Right. Um, we're, the main focus is to see what streetlights are necessary, necessary and right. what can be decommissioned. Mm -hmm. totally. um, Eversource would be the ones to decommission any lights that we don't want, um, and they would adjust the buyback cost accordingly. Um, the, you emailed the agreement, correct? Yes. You emailed this to anybody. Right? Emailed everybody yeah here it is here I mean it's uh, Donna looked over this this is what we were discussing earlier last week um, this looks like the last one yeah, I don't think I did. There were a couple things that were changed between their legal counsel and ours okay so, okay um, mostly to do with liability limits and indemnification. Yeah. 
And although it's not in this contract about scope of work, it, he does state it in the email, which I think is fine. Yes, <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I move to sign the contract with RTE for um, Streetlight. Study. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 When do they think this will happen? Um, well, if we're to take Shelburne as an example, it's probably going to be a while. Oh, okay. Bummer. Well, this is the first stage. Yeah. So after they give us, come back to us with the study, we'll probably have yeah. to have, you know, a public forum and stuff with the results. and Because they'll be talking about right. where do we decommission these So lights. like next spring or? We hope. And then what we're hoping is that when we, as soon as we have that, we can have, thank you, we can have the, um, the sustainability committee will be working on the green communities grant right. to fund the next step yeah. in this. So yeah. Now, Great. Now that we have this, I can I can say, oh, by the way, get doing? us on your calendar. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Awesome. I would assume there'd be some pushback on some lights if both should... for and against. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, next on the new business, the discussion and vote to sign a letter of support for the Conway Swimming Pool Grant application to T-Mobile Hometown Grant Initiative. So this was a request that came in from the Conway Swimming Pool to sign a letter of support. They're applying to T-Mobile and it's like a community enhancement grant and what they're hoping to use the funds for is first to... Um, refurbish the uh, platform yeah, yeah, in the middle. And then if they have extra funds, there's a couple other things that they want to work on. Awesome. Um, I didn't get it all in time to draft the letters today, but I, you know they wanted me to draft one and also to have one from the select board. So okay. if you all approve me doing that, then I'll pull it together and yeah. put it out for your signature. I will make a motion. We uh, write a letter to support the Conway Swimming Pool Grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Um, Chris, you can come as one of our guests if you want, if you haven't swam with the Conway Swimming Pool. <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's really, nice. <laughs> it's really awesome. Let's say refreshing is the word. <laughs> yes. And the dive that we're talking about is like a, what, 12 foot? Yeah. It's at least 12 foot. It's a right of passage for every kid in town. <laughs> Uh, next on the agenda, items not anticipated 40 hours in advance. Nothing. Uh, TA updates. I'm Just, happy to go through any of this. If you, I mean, I looked I them over. Yeah, yeah, I don't really have any think, questions. Okay. So good, thank you, though. Good, thanks. It was a very well-outlined mm -hmm. um, sheet that you gave. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, select board member comments or concerns, aside from our concern for our uh, our, our town administrator assistant, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I hope he's okay. Yes. <laughs> I, I, the, the only concern that I want to bring up is the fact that I, I've heard that the treasurer and secretary of the Festival of the Hills Committee have resigned. Oh. So there are currently only two people on the Festival Committee. Oh, no. Yeah. Already? Oh no! Our it's, newest committee isn't that our, our newest committee? It's, well, well, it's yet to right. I mean, they're still. It's not a town committee. Not a town committee. Okay. So the special legislation, I, I think we wrote a, a a letter in favor of that bill last week or the week before. So it should be before them now. So as soon as we find out, then the select board can you know we can put forth yeah you know, new for new because we'll have to reorganize everything. Yeah. Is Hazel on that committee? She, yeah. And she's she's now the chair. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. So I'm about fast I rising. Know, it was her, yeah, her, yeah. Her first year on the committee became the chair and is now like one of only two people left. And oh. she's happy to keep doing it. But um, yeah. I've got to get some of her young friends on the committee. Yeah. So. And I think, I mean, yeah, everyone loves the festival, but I just think that it's going to be incumbent upon us. To we should do an event at like the end. To yeah, talk to about this, to, to yeah. recruit some younger people in. I agree. As soon as as soon as we get back the legislation, I think we should go for it. Yeah, and, yeah. Put it out there. Absolutely. So, that's awesome. Fine. I'll also yeah, ask Seth, who I had on the capital improvement committee for a while. He had a lot going on. Mm -hmm. His baby is now a little older. It's not as intense as capital improvement. Mm -hmm. So maybe he'll join in because Heart Farm was there. 
Oh, oh, for the festival. Yeah, for the festival. Oh, the festival. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe we do something at the end. Yeah, and I think we just make people aware that like yeah. this festival might not happen next year. Right, <laughs> right, right. Like I think people just don't realize. Yeah. You know, it's important. It's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Another concern that people, I've just, and it's a little awkward because they're new neighbors of mine. Mm -hmm. So, but I've had many concerns raised and a few phone calls about there is what people are calling an ADU uh, next door, mm -hmm. right across from the cemetery, mm -hmm. and I know I I I know the uh, planning board is aware of this. And I know the building inspector has already been out. Um, but people, it's operational. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, now the I, this is all word of mouth. I don't know that this is accurate, but the the building inspector said since it has wheels. Oh yeah. There's no. Yeah. It, if it has wheels, then there's absolutely nothing you can do. But Technically they have it. Um, but we have a thing against trailers in town. I thought they were grandfathers, the only the I'd mobile look, homes. I'd have to look that up, but mm -hmm. if it's a mo if it's on wheels, then it's not considered an actual part of the property. So they took a bunch of trees out. They have, you know, gray water mm -hmm. set up, electricity, you know, and the neighbors, not me, because it's not in my, but have raised a lot of concerns. Um, we might want to take that up with the. Uh, George and the oh, yeah. planning. planning board. This also reminds me that um, some of the surrounding town town administrators had been thinking of asking the FERCOG to maybe get a full time zoning enforcement officer mm -hmm. because they're, the building inspector's department is so overwhelmed with everything they have to do with the FERCOG that. So if the board agrees, I will definitely send along our support for a new position yes. for zoning enforcement. Because yes. it's it's everybody doesn't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. you know. But um, it just uh, um, and don't doesn't the law change? Isn't there something going into effect? Yes, again? the ADUs. The yes, ADUs, yeah. yeah. Well, the planning board's already on top of that. They're okay. working with town council okay. on on a bylaw change for us because you know one of the things that comes up is you have an ADU, you got. A shared driveway. All of a sudden, the number that are allowed in the shared driveway has to be able to double because you could have an ADU for each house that's allowed on the. You know, so there's right. complications like that. But there are other things where the planning board and the town will just want to be sort of on top of what limitations there are. That being said, a large part of the limitations is going to be our own septic systems mm -hmm. because the septic is going to have to be able to accept. Yeah, either tie it into the existing and make it or like, build a new septic, which is yeah. not cheap. So I had actually be. asked uh, the planning board last year to do a bylaw for ADUs and then Jeff Lacey let me know this was coming mm -hmm. down the pipe. So it's already, already here. <laughs> well, it's going to be here soon. Yeah, like right. And I think we really have to be ahead of it because it could be crazy. Like if this, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm, I go back and forth on the current situation of they know exactly what they're drilling and managing and, and they have no idea mm -hmm. like and i have no idea which it is uh -huh. you know what i mean but this is if you drive by it is looks much more like an adu than like a mobile camper or yeah. something right but it, it looks like it was built for but it's yeah. on wheels it does have wheels so it's house on wheels and but then that you know but then like you said if we had some you know guidelines around mobile homes then does that make it I don't know what those are offhand yeah so I just know that the ones the few that are in town I had heard were grandfathered and there are no more allowed like that structure of living like you can't come dump a mobile home somewhere and, 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 what, and what technically makes it a mobile home I mean because it sounds like an ADU on wheels <laughs> That's what it sounds like a mobile home to me. I think it's going to get really crazy yeah, with so. all of us splitting hairs about this. But, I mean, to me, you know, like also, I mean, this is going to have to have a heat source. Mm -hmm. You know, like a camper Yeah. doesn't work. Does it have a heat source usually? I don't know. Usually they yeah. do have either solar Great on RVs. top or they'll yeah. have, yeah, little mini splits. And they use um, propane tanks. 
And I don't know if it's a, a complicating factor at all, but it's the face of the vision. It's an office. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like interesting. So, yeah, I was going to say with the Great Water issue, that's kind of a sticking in my head too, because you would think they would need, if they're going to have a toilet on the office, they definitely got to have septic hookup. So yeah. Yeah, maybe the planning board or ZBA can. Board of Health would be board looking of into also, the yeah. gray water issue. Uh, in the composting toilet or something. So who will tell the Board of Health? Um, I mean, that's cat, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we can tell her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and if it's fine and they're following the rules, that's fine. I just want to, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. make sure. No, and that I mean that cool. happened right after that legislation. So I, mean, it did. I think it's probably mm -hmm. this is not gonna be the first. Mm -hmm. I don't think so either. That. That's why I think okay. they have to be and they're you know, really nice people, but you know, I'm just say for those. I mean that just for you know, I just got an earful of pickleball from yeah. another neighbor who is isn't a butter and he's like, What is going on? And Fix it. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to play pickleball. <laughs> Not on the clock. That's right. Well, oh, those are two big things. All right. Festival of Hills and ADUs. Yeah. Um, mail. I got a lot of mail before. Did we say we were going to? No. Yeah, no, no. No, no, no mail. No mail um, today. Huh? No announcements. Next meeting is going to be November 4th, unless mm -hmm. anyone has anything else. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you.